to another episode of Bones and Tubs. We're glad you're all listening today. Feels like a long time since we've done a recording, but I'm pretty sure we did one last week. Yeah, we just released it really quick. To, yeah. Really quick, because I was talking about that live. Yeah, I think, yeah, and this week uh, we're recording a little bit later. We're going to tell you about that. Just want to tell you guys, um, we're going to dedicate this episode to um, uh, old Grandma Tubs. She uh, she left us this week, and, um, you know, I've been having to uh, help out with the arrangements and uh, just wanted to uh, dedicate this episode to her. I know <laughs> Grandma Tubbs never listened to the show. It was a little bit too blue for I wouldn't want, to, want her to listen to it. But, uh, you know, um, she was an awesome lady. And we had talked about her on the show before with her badassery when it came to losing a finger and not even not giving a fuck about it. Zero fucks to be given on that um, day. So I'm going to read this little thing real quick that um, I've known about for years. And to me, it's always represented her and what she's about. Um, it's a speech that Paul Harvey gave at a FFA convention in the 70s. It's titled, So God Made a Farmer. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting for the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife's done feeding visiting ladies, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon, and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die, then dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a per persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of haywire, feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon, and then paint in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and yet stop in midfield and race to help when he sees the first smoke from a neighbor's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to tame lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink cone pullets, who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadowlark. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners, somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake and disc and plow and plant, and tie the fleece and strain the milk and replenish the self-feeder and finish a hard week's work with a five-mile drive to church. Somebody who would bail a family together with soft, strong bonds of sharing, who would laugh and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. I love you, Grandma. Come on. You know, um... You know, me and Bones don't share too much. We don't try to get too personal on the show. We might tell a few stories here and there, but and I've always wanted to reiterate this fact on the show is is that we are both men who believe in the equality of men and women, and I would have to say in of a, a large part of that in me has to do with the fact that <laughs> my grandmother wasn't just the strongest woman I ever knew; she was the strongest person I ever knew. She endured hardship like nobody else, and she didn't put up with anybody's nonsense. <laughs> no time for your bullshit. Yeah, more or less, she was um, she was great. And every and the crazy part is is that I don't think there's a single person that ever met her that didn't she didn't leave a lasting impression on. Everybody knew her. 
everybody, everybody said the same things about her. She was tough. She was strong. Then she could hold a conversation with you <clears throat> with just about anything, unless it involved the internet. She didn't have the internet. She didn't believe in it. <laughs> I believe in that witchcraft. <laughs> she got her news from the from the newspaper and the TV. She liked to listen to the Reds games on WLW. Like I said, I'm gonna miss you, Grandma, a lot. Okay. Woo! Out of the way. Feels. Yeah. Legitimate feels. But yeah, so thank you guys for listening to the show today. Um, we're trying to make this uh, do a nice um, turn and bring it back to the um, lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> guys, sometimes we get too heavy, and unfo- you know, unfortunately today was one of those days it had to be heavy. It couldn't be light. I mean, um, but yeah, so. Anything in the news lately? Um, I don't know. I did just post to the page. I'm hoping that some of you take that picture and share it because I want it, I want it to develop a fucking legitimate conversation. But I was buying a Red Bull today to go with the two cups of coffee that I had before I left for work because some some of you may know that I'm a bit of a speed file. And I saw a picture that said something to the effect that you know Red Bull can be purchased at the counter with an EBT card. And it set me on a fucking, set me on the path, yeah. the path for today. It's just, uh, you know, we were talking before we started recording it. What do you need a Red Bull for? If you, I mean, honestly, I'm doing it because I'm, I'm trying to develop my craft before going to work. Yeah. And I, my, my point was, why does somebody who doesn't work need, <laughs> need a Red Bull? I mean, granted, like, how should I deny someone their pick me up? But I would almost guarantee goddamn tea that coffee is covered by EBT too. For sure. And it's probably a little bit safer for you than Red Bull. Yeah. Um, no bull piss. That's touring. Google it. Exactly. That's real, you know, real life, real life <laughs> science there. I mean, if you want my opinion on the matter, and I'm sure you do, if you're listening to the show. Really, they want it. I just pulled Lewis Prothero. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you want my opinion? You want my opinion on the matter? Um, no, uh, it's. I think EBT needs to go back to the purest uh, elements of itself. It needs to cover the the essentials, the things that sustain human life. I think that's the whole idea behind like pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. Like you could pursue happiness if you please. Now here's the thing though: if you're if you are uh, firmly planted <clears throat> upon the the teat of the American government for your sustenance and needs, then uh, you're not really pursuing your own happiness. No. You're trying to pursue happiness through through a, through a means which we will not gain. I'd like to share a story of EBT, if I might. Go ahead. It was a sociological experiment I went through on my time on third shift. I was riding to work with one one warrior known yeah. only as Fox. Okay. And uh, we were talking about his neighbors who lived directly across the street. He was. I, I said, "What's their fucking life like?" Because they it was one of those uh, slumlord houses. Bringing the property values down yeah. of all the respectable people that work in the area, and uh, it was this lady on assistance, I guess. You know, she was retired and widowed, so I'm not mad. But she had this like shitty, let's just call it East Dayton family okay. that moved in with her, and they were all about making tax-free income, selling drugs, because that's what happens when you have illegal substances. Yeah, you know. I said, "What's their typical day like?" Because none of them work. Yeah. He's like, "Well, I watched them the other day when I got up and." You know, taking care of the kids, took them to daycare, and uh, came back. He was doing some yard work. He looks over, it's like 11. This dude rolls out of the house, kind of stretches, wearing his struggle Tims, you know? Yeah. His, uh, his baggy his baggy uh, shorts and a wife beater, which, you know, is appropriate because it's summertime. And he goes out, does like a little, you know, little workout movement, trying to get the blood the blood flowing because he woke up early. You know, he got up before noon. Yeah. And he goes out and sits on the sidewalk and just kind of lays there. And takes in some sun for about an hour. And then he gets up and <laughs> stumbles down the alleyway between uh, Fox's house. And uh, when I say Fox, you can just picture a fox, an actual fox. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Fox's house next to it is, a, is an alleyway that goes directly to the gas station in that town. So he, you know, with his fresh supply of free vitamin D3 and better look on life, he goes down to the gas station to use what cash he has to buy a carton of cigarettes, alcoholic beverages, and uh, then he, I think, used the EBT card for snack foods and a, one of those snow cone things. Nice. Comes back and feeds the kids, you know? <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that kills me, too. Like, like you know, now that I'm, I'm a homeowner, <laughs> I've noticed one thing. Like, you know, like, broken window policies work. 
like in the mindset that if you maintain your property, those around you are compelled to make their places look nicer as well. A wise man, O'Malley, once told me that he would cut, he took care of his yard better than any other of his neighbors, and he said that an effect occurred when he did it. He said, as he took care more care of his lawn and made it more beautiful, those around him did the exact same. Here's the thing. <laughs> I don't understand why you see people with trashed houses who don't have jobs. Or, like, their yard looks like shit. At least make the outside of your house look nice. I mean, I've only been off an extra one day so far, and I've already spent copious amounts of time beautifying my house. Yeah. Like, making it look nicer. Well, that's the thing, man. Like, And I hate to even bash. I hate to get on the welfare wagon. You know, I hate to bash them because they're, you know, they're, they're legit. There, there, there are, are some that are legit. Some legit people, and I don't even really so much care about the abuse. Not say I don't care about it. It doesn't make me upset, but like if you compare the amount of money we spend on welfare to what we spend on military spending or sending like billions of dollars to other countries that don't need it, it's it pales in comparison. Such a small amount of money, but yeah. it's it's a symptom of a much bigger problem. Well, just, it's cultural. Is what it is. It's one of those things I hope that the, the Trump train runs over on its way to town. I hope it just fucking gets near Jacks. Well, that, see, that's the thing, though. What he's trying to do and what he's saying people call fascism. <clears throat> because here's the thing, everybody. <laughs> Let's establish one thing right now. Nationalism and fascism are two different things. Two different. Let's establish that. Like, having pride in one's nation doesn't make one a fascist. Right. Like, in the past, you, you, ha you see, the thing is people will get confused because you see that common link. Between two said things, you see a common thread between uh, people who have pride in their nation and people who are Nazis. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, like, we just have to differentiate, to differentiate between that and understand that, like, you can have pride in one's nation. And I think uh, Mr. Trump said it best, even though everybody collectively on the left and in the media hated his inaugural speech. He said something that resonated with me. He said, you cannot be prejudiced. Uh, I'm going to fuck this line up. <laughs> I already know. I just thought of it. Okay. You cannot have prejudice in your heart when you fill it with patriotism. Right. And that is truth. True. Truth. All of us are Americans. All of us have freedoms and rights that cannot be infringed upon. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. But that's that's the dream. Yeah. It's not the reality we live in, but that's the dream. And I, I make a call out to all of you out there who believe that you are... We, I know we talked about patriotism before, but all those who believe they're patriots have to believe they cannot have prejudice in their hearts. If they have prejudice in their hearts, then they are not, in fact, patriots. Our president said that himself. So it's, that's how we have to, like... If i got to be the first one to, like, fucking cover his eyes and walk into that fucking fire, I'll do it. Yeah. If it means, like... Even if it means my downfall, it meant that at least I was trying to believe in the ideal that this country is based upon. <sighs> I did see, uh, you know, all these people were upset that Sessions got uh, appointed yesterday. They were calling him racist. And uh, Outlaw Morgan had a video last night on Facebook. He did a live feed. He was like, you know that motherfucker won, like, NAACP awards, right? Like, he was... Don't get me wrong. I, I don't like Sessions for my own reasons. Right. But, I mean, can you go after him for legitimate reasons instead of just trying to use that fucking tired old paintbrush of racist or sexist? Well, you get a fucking break. Like, I think, and I looked this up because, you know, I, sometimes I, I don't know. So, if I don't know something, I look it up. Now, I like I don't like Sessions for different reasons other than the racist thing because I didn't know about the racist thing. So, I looked it up to see just, like, what it was. And allegedly, back in the day, allegedly, now, don't know if that's confirmed or not. Right. Someone came to him with information about um, things that the KKK were doing. Mm -hmm. And in response, he said, I don't care what the KK day, KKK does uh, as long as they're not smoking marijuana. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, if that's true or not, I don't know. If it is, that then shame on him. Yeah. Shame on you. But that brings up the other side of it where, like, I think his priorities are in the wrong place. And I think that this, you know, 40 some odd year war on drugs has been catastrophic in nature. And I saw a good meme yesterday about that where they said the peak, at the peak of prohibition, you, in one year, they had 300 officers shot in the line of duty. Yeah. Okay. We didn't meet that 300 mark until we came around to the modern era or the 70s when we declared another war on drugs. So what does that tell us? Prohibition kills people. Right. 
Well, they can't make money, or uh, you know, they can't they can't effectively fleece the population and have workers in their slave factories if they legalize drugs. Well, that's the thing. Like, they can't tell us. Like, <sighs> see, like I'm in that camp where I get some. Like, I'm all about lifting the prohibition on certain uh, recreational uh, uh, substances <laughs> yeah. because it's just a waste of money to me. Oh, yeah. Like, some I get. I totally get. I mean, we live in, we live in fucking heroin overdose capital of the fucking world, it seems like. Right, but what, what good does it being illegal do? Nothing. I mean, yeah. it just gives money to criminals. Exactly. Now, if it was a well-regulated system, heavily taxed, yeah. and you invested more money in prevention of people actually using said substances Treat instead like of... a medical issue. Yeah. And that's the thing, like... <laughs> well, and then you look at the other side of that. Fucking prescription painkiller uh, uh, addiction. Right. We, we're still in the fucking dark ages when it comes to pain management. Yeah. We haven't figured out... There's other there's other means to uh, uh, regulate people with their pain meds. Like, should someone really be on a fucking morphine... Or is it fentanyl patch? Right, fentanyl patch. Should someone really be on a fentanyl patch permanently? Well, what are they going to do, though? I mean, it's... I don't know. I mean, they're not certainly... They're going to... I'm surprised that they didn't, uh, you know, take away the legal stripe of... Uh, Kratom, because yeah. that, that was on the DEA's fucking chopping block. I just got some of that, too, by the way. And I can talk about it because it's legal. Yeah. Um, it's healthy. Is it good? It's neat because it depends on the person that takes it, but it's also dose-related. So if you take a small dose, it has a uh, upper effect. Yeah. Makes you like, you know, it's like Coca tea almost. Yeah. From what I've read. But if you take a high dose, it's like a euphoric downer. Oh. But regardless of the dose, it also effectively cancels out pain. Hmm. They also have a lot of studies where people have used it to beat opiate addiction. Yeah. But, you know, I digress. I mean... It's harmless, therefore they should probably make it illegal. We have to address these problems first. <clears throat> like, we can't keep electing the same tired fucking ideals if we want anything to change. Though. That's what I hope that changes with this administration. Yeah. I, well, I, I mean, know. he brought all the ph big pharma guys together, sat them at the table, and basically said, one, we need to bring production back to America. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> one, we need to bring production back to America. Two, we need to lower the prices now. Mm -hmm. Like, why should we be passing bills to make it legal to go to Canada to get your drugs when we should be passing bills to make drugs cheaper in America? Right. That and, like... The whole fucking pharmaceutical system has all been designed to make fucking unparalleled amounts of money. Bugs loads. Like, there's another podcast I listened to uh, that has a doctor on it, and she talked about Big Pharma one day, and she talked about the fact that, like, it makes no fucking sense to advertise for drugs. Right. Like, and that's a lot of them, and a lot of drug companies claim that's why drugs cost so much is for advertising campaigns. Fucking kill like, the advertisements. Why do you need to advertise? The only people you should be advertising to are doctors. Because they're the ones prescribing the medication in the first place. Like EpiPen. There is like two epinephrine, two EpiPen, and there's another one about the only companies, uh, there's only the only two types of epinephrine sold in the country. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to advertise for EpiPen? Right. It's a waste of time. It makes no sense. People need it. It's heavy. You know what I mean? Like, I can see, like, like the only advertising I ever see for, like, drugs and pharmaceuticals is if it was, in fact, for recreational purposes. Right. <laughs> try, try heroin! Are you Brain. tired of not being awake for three days in a row? <laughs> Crystal meth! Crystal meth, 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 meth. Yes. <laughs> Electric shoots out of your fucking eyeballs. Like, one time, I was watching this show, and apparently meth is a really big thing in, um, like, the Philippines and East Asia and stuff like that, um... And apparently it's so, like, prevalent in the culture, like, in the working culture. Like, they take shitloads of meth, and this one, they interviewing this one guy. He's like, yeah, it's great. He's like, you know, you take some. He's like, he's a painter. He's like, I could paint for, like, fucking 24 hours straight. Yeah. He's like, get a whole fucking building done. He's like, I don't, he's like, you know, take a couple pills, you're good to go. Like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't understand the, the advertisements in themselves. Like, I found out about a drug that I wanted to try, uh... Forget the scientist's name that created it. He was the same guy that figured out, um, I think it was LSD, but he synthesized it from a fungus called ergot, and mm -hmm. the drug is called hydrogen. It's prescribed to people with dementia. Apparently, I read about it because it's like a, they were talking about it being a new tropic and a, uh, one of these new smart drugs where people in like Silicon Valley and NASA and MIT are taking these things like Skittles. Mm. And it's supposed to be phenomenal. Like it helps you grow new brain cells, new neural pathways. It get crazy. It keeps you at that brain growth state like uh, you have when you're a child 
for the cool. like, it's relatively low on the side effect scale. You start out taking, I think it's like 500 milligrams, and you work your way up slowly to one and a half. And then once you hit that, you can just take whatever you want. Yeah. But like, uh, I talked to a doctor about trying it out, and they just laughed at me. Like, well, you advertise the shit like it's, you know, talk to your doctor about, Yeah. I want to try it. Hmm. Eat a dick, apparently, was the prescribed yeah. response to that. Apparently, the, apparently, only big thinkers are allowed to take it. <clears throat> yeah. I've heard some of your ideals, and I don't think they need further explanation. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to expand upon this. <laughs> yeah. You spend too much time in the attic anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, the whole I, I'd say like I we could talk about the fucking pharmaceutical injury, industry and the war on drugs. I'd say for an entire goddamn episode. Yeah, it's not gonna. But it's not gonna change nothing. No, nothing. Nothing's gonna change Maybe until we until we all collectively decide like enough's enough on this fucking spending billions of dollars to fucking stem the tide of drugs. They're gonna happen anyways. Well, eventually these older politicians are gonna you know ride the boat. Yeah. To the. Would you say the Lord of the Rings reference? The undying, uh, lands. The undying lands. They're going to go there eventually, and people our age and people that are uh, of the same mindset, you know, with the, the whole not spending money for bullshit causes, will eventually be in power. Yeah. Hopefully, the institutions aren't the problem. My fear is that they're just able to throw, you know, tens of zeros at these people in the form of a paycheck, and they just like adopt this anti-marijuana sessions opinion. It's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> I can't even handle it, dude. Like, we need to ban lettuce. You are sweating some serious shit. Like, here's the thing: if you started, like, if you just made them all legal and regulated the fuck out of them, tax the dumb shit out of it. You take the shit off the streets. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you have an entire populace of individuals that no longer you've never you, they no longer have fucking these violent means. Right. Because, like, it's what's, it's this war on drugs and it's the drugs themselves being in a black market that create the violence. Mm -hmm. If you take that out of the darkness and into the light, you'll, you'll take, you'll, you'll sterilize it. And that's exactly what needs to happen. You need to fucking throw a UV light on this motherfucker and kill the bacteria. Yeah. Sanitize the scenario. Yeah. Bring it, bring it clean. So that somebody who wants his, wants their fucking heroin fix has to go to a fucking a facility right. where it's like monitored and shit. Like you're paying like it's like going for a massage. Like if you wanted to do heroin, you'd literally have to go into this place. Fucking they'd have a little booth for you, and you sit in there and be monitored while right. you do it. And I I would say easily you would get more people stopping doing it than anything else because they'd be like I don't want to fucking do this shit with all these people around judging me with their eyes. Yeah. Oh, and I would staff that place with the most judgmental motherfuckers. Yeah. Like grandmas. I would staff it with grandmas with shotguns behind the desk. Right. Like, here you go. Here's your death. Filthy bitch. Here's your death. You know, like sometimes when when I buy cigarettes, they give me this lip like... Killing yourself. Especially with my son with me. They always give me the fucking death stare. Yeah. Like I'm just committing like the fucking ultimate act of destruction. I heard they passed the law you can't smoke in a car with a kid now. Is that true? I heard it too, but I don't fucking. I want to see somebody pull me over. Right. I mean, I I don't I do it as little as possible when my son's in the car, just because. Same thing when he's here. I don't I don't like having him deal with secondhand smoke and all that shit. But I'm trying to, you know, I'm gonna quit. <laughs> right. It's just uh, nicotine is a fucking is a devil temptress to hell. I don't get it because uh, can't you buy your kids beer at a restaurant? Um. Yeah, but to a certain extent, it's not like you could sit there and get your kids shit faced. Couldn't you, though? You could. I mean, especially if the kid's, like, young. It only take, like, two beers. The cop pulls you over, and he's like, yeah, I cite you on ORC such and such. And they uh, might have to be 18. They look back at your kid, and your kid's smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I think they have to be 18, don't they? I don't know. I just always heard that when I was growing up. Well, I know, like, at, at Houston, where well, I used to work at Houston Woods, they did that. Like, college students would come in that were younger than 21, mm. and the parent would buy them a drink. Well, that makes sense. You're old enough to die for the country. You might as well be able to kill yourself. Liver, yeah. Liver failure. I mean, fuck, alcohol. That's that's a whole other episode. Yeah. Like, I mean... Well, we tried making it illegal once. It didn't work out. All no, that, it, no, it didn't. All that did was increase violence and uh, increase... A lot of people made a lot of money off that. Yeah, and you know... Yeah, a lot of people not only made money, but they made so much money, they were able to go legit and then right. join, join political scenes and whatnot. Yeah. A la Kennedy. Hashtag Kennedy. Yeah. Joe Kennedy was a fucking pro... Was a, was a fucking bootlegger. I'm not mad at him. No, I mean either. He had to make money. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like you will, you you open the good door. Basically, before prohibition, organized crime was a small bit, right? And then you bring in prohibition, they start running shit, and they went from a small time operation like street level. They were street level crime, yeah, like hawking drugs, doing all that shit. And then once prohibition came in, they started making huge sums of money. 
they were able to get into the bigger market. The, they were no longer small fish. Like yeah, big fish. They got into the fucking racketeering markets. They got into all the professional gambling markets. They got into fucking the unions. Yeah. Like they mu- they muscled their way into going from street level criminals to fucking we're talking secret La Cosa Nostra style fucking operations that were you know you know making their kids politicians. <laughs> it's awesome too that those guys became politicians and were still you know men of the people and then had to have their heads exploded yeah. before dying of you know plane crash. Exactly. You know what I mean? Or like uh, is that Kennedy that Trump? Put into office is he part of that bloodline? I don't think he is. Well, I mean, in reality, he probably is, but I don't know if he's in the direct bloodline. Yeah, you know, his da- they actually I saw an interview with uh, JFK's daughter Caroline, and they asked her, "Are you thinking about going into politics?" And she was like, "No, I'd rather just be on TV. I'd like to live. Yeah, I'd like to live because the only one that like the only one that survived all of it was old Ted Ted Kennedy. Yeah, he lived for years, but um, he played ball though. He played ball." He knew to play ball. Yeah. I and mean, they, fuck, they, he lost two brothers. They even took care of him. Like, you know, you start running over hookers and shit, and you don't go to jail for it. Exactly. No problem. I mean, they he played ball. Sure, I'll sign that bill. Yeah. I'll shut the fuck up. I'll shut my fucking mouth. Yeah. Let me make my money in politics, and I'll shut my fucking mouth. Right. That's all I, That's all he needed. Fuck the American people. Yeah. He didn't have... I mean, here's the thing, though. If you look at him pre-RFK getting assassinated... He was just as boisterous and crazy as fuck as his brothers were. Yeah. And then post RFK, he calmed right the fuck down. Yeah, they put that rubber band on his nuts. Yeah. And fucking lock them off. Pa pa. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, we're not we're not fucking even talking conspiracy theory here. No, I mean these these are facts. Yeah. Read a history book. Maybe watch some video. I mean, yeah. Magic bullet and whatnot. Back to the left. <laughs> whatever. It's whatever. I got a I got a mild topic we can get into if you want. Okay. If not, we'll uh, I'll clap and we'll just delete all this. That's fine. But uh, what about the effect of runaway spending as a means to the cloud and peasant model for the universal basic income? So what you're saying is is uh, how we're gear how we're moving towards that <clears throat> notion of uh, well, makes sense at least in my mind. You know, look at all the runaway spending and just fraud and abuse, not only with welfare but with everything. And they're just, well, I mean, especially welfare, too, if you consider the Syrian or any country's refugee problem where they come over here and immediately are signed up in sanctuary cities for driver's licenses, benefit cards, yeah. and all this other shit. When the Cloud and Pivot model came around in the 40s or the 60s, I don't remember. Wikipedia will let you know if you care about exact dates, but okay. uh, their idea was to um, over-encumber the welfare system so much that it would fail and it would bring about a universal basic income. And they haven't been talking about universal basic income until recently, maybe the last five, six years. But some smaller countries are already doing it. As I say, I know for a fact some are already doing it. Switzerland? Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Though. Switzerland has the capability to do that. Their right. their, their um, money is the most, is is worth the most. Right. They, they're, economically speaking, they are on a good footing. They're the cat's ass. Yeah. The bees knees. They they know what they're fucking doing. The cat's pajamas. Switzerland has was smart about everything when it came to money. Right. <laughs> like this idea with the universal basic income. I think if you, here's the thing too. Like we talk about how it's not sustainable here in this country. If you look at, I guess the idea with the universal basic basic income is that you would take the poverty level of let's say eleven, twelve thousand dollars, and you would give it away to every adult American citizen. So you get a thousand dollars a month. And that's to cover the idea is that it would cover your basic necessities, your food, your your house, no, or your your bills, right? Okay, where just to clarify for the audience, so they understand, <clears throat> where is this money coming from? Tax, tax base, taxing who? Exactly. I'm assuming it's coming out of. They would just take it from upper class, or I think it's an existing thing. They would, uh, well, in our in our system, they would take it from wherever they wanted to take it from, and they would really just. Ask the Federal Reserve, which is not a federal entity, yeah. to print the money, and we would just go into debt. But mm. if you look at this way, this is the thing that perplexes me about it. They do all these bailouts for the upper class, mm-hmm. the banks, and all this. We don't see that money. No. So and, the Bush, the Bush era, fucking paid off all of our mortgages, commercial or residential, and we're still paying it. So they got a double payoff. Yeah. But if you give that money to people on a plastic card that's reloaded every month, they can't save it unless they withdraw the money from an ATM. It's going to have to go back into the economy. Yeah. So say you're spending, it would be some retarded amount of money. It'd be like basically, what's the population? Three hundred sixty million. Something along three sixty, three seventy, somewhere in there now. 
So three sixty times a thousand times twelve, and that's your that's your that's your price tag. But that's yeah. also going to flood back into the economy. So is that sustainable? Question mark. Question mark. Good question mark. Because or or what if we allocated funds, uh, wasteful funds, going to other countries? I think you could be able to if you put it if you took away from that. Because like here's the thing, like I don't think. A lot of our audience seems to understand how much money we're actually putting into other go- other countries and other governments. Yeah, like it's retarded. Oh, it's it's a it's an amount uh, unsurpassed. We if we took that money and reallocated it into the United States and really invested in this country, like I think that's the thing we missed. There's two. Okay, there's two routes to go about being the United States and helping other countries. There's we become so fucking awesome that. We're able to help other people, mm-hmm. like through charity, through volunteerism, and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Then there's the globalization route, where give everybody, give people uh, unfair advantages over us <laughs> to bring their level of, of prosperity up. And take ours down. And take ours down. And that's what they've been trying to do, and unfortunately, it's not working because the common Americans are starting to get fucking pissed. Right. Because you're bringing our level of, of, of livability down. Yeah. To bring others up. And the worst part is, is like, you can see how corrupt and how terrible it's been working in some countries. Look at Mexico. How much money do we give to Mexico? And they still have a shitty government yeah. with a shitty, uh, with a drug cartel that runs everything and has all the politicians in their pockets. I mean, fuck, the biggest drug kingpin in the fucking country escaped from prison twice. Yeah. He's still up for number three. Yeah. They don't think they've extradited him here yet, have they? Who, El Tapo? No, he's here. Oh, is he? Well, mm-hmm. Probably over with. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, unless they do some real crazy shit, El Tapo isn't leaving the country. Because that's the difference. Like, we have done a... I, I, I'll give one thing. We have, to a fair extent, ended that level of corruption. Yeah. I believe. You couldn't have El Tapo escape from two different prisons in the United States. No. Nah, no way. Like, it, it, in the second attempt, you literally had... Okay, for him to escape, they had to have had... Imagine, like, the director of prisons in Ohio... He would have had to have been in on it yeah. for El Chapo to escape. That level of corruption all the way up the ladder, I think, personally, I might be naive in this, doesn't exist here. No, not unless your last name's like a Rockefeller or something like exactly. that. Exactly, well, yeah, yeah. And in I which mean, case, they just fake your death. Mm-hmm. Then you're in fucking, you know, fucking Panama, not Panama, uh, you're in fucking uh, Virgin Islands somewhere or fucking Canary Island or something. Yeah, fucking hanging, hanging out with uh, Tim McVeigh. Yeah, you know, hanging out with fucking some birds of paradise and whatnot. Right, but um, real players. But yeah, so but to the to that extent, I we I feel like we don't have that level of corruption. Our corruption is a different corporate kind. Yeah, yeah, it's not run by drug cartels and whatnot. Still gross. Yeah, it's still gross. But anyways, let's do a topic. Um, our guardian angel, sweet sweet baby Katie, uh, has two for us today. Saint Catherine. Saint Catherine. <laughs> How about that's what we call her, Saint Catherine of College Corner. Yeah. <laughs> Saint Catherine of College Corner sent us two today, and they're both gems. Um, the first one asks uh, whether uh, we're heading into an age of VI and VR and AI that's going to ultimately lead to our destruction. I can see that. I fully and wholeheartedly can confirm that notion. Yeah. If not, it hasn't happened already. Have you fucked with VR yet? Uh, just to the smallest extent. It's heavy, man. Or like, um, there's an AR, augmented okay. reality. Yeah, that shit's fucky. That took over my summer. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, augmented reality, fucking, it invaded our lives heavily this last summer with Pokemon Go. Can you imagine the fucking amount of intel that Google got from all that? Oh my God, people by the millions across the world playing this game, not aware that they're fucking forward-facing cameras and rear-facing cameras, and all this stuff is just recording pictures in high def and tagging it with your. GPS, your sound. They're basically mapping a fucking perfect inner memory for the AI robots. Yeah. When they storm the streets. I was going to say, like, you know, you have groups like the EU and even the UN uh, starting to draft documents involving AI. Yeah. Like how we're supposed to go about treating them. And I'm, for one, am impressed by the EU stance on it. That their first drafts are basically saying these things, no matter how smart they are, are not us. Oh, man, you just wait. I tell you right now, the death nail is going to be these people charging fucking Berkeley streets and all these other motherfuckers dressed as pussies out there screaming and all this shit. They're going to be the ones that fucking, they're going to be the ones that bring in the death. 
Yeah. They're going to have these AI robots, the servant class, you know? Oh, We're yeah. going to all have our, our Apple human, whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck they call it, cleaning our house. And then, you know, one of our esteemed coworkers or people we pass in the streets can be going home and raw dogging the shit out of it. Oh, yeah. And then these people start storming and they're like, you need to let them have rights. As soon as they, they I see them causing some kind of a, I don't know, well, a riot, and they flip the intelligence switch, and those fuckers go live. Yeah, but well, just like iRobot. I mean, that's a shitty movie, but it's it does raise the point. Like, I mean, <clears throat> at least for at the get go, we've had they have a clear enough mind to be like these things aren't human, and they can't be us because everything that they are and everything that they become at the end of the day still amounts to predictability. Like they're not unpredictable well, like we are. I mean, you give them quantum computing and AI, there's no fucking way to tell. We won't even we don't even understand quantum mechanics or quantum computing if we give these things quantum processors they're gonna they're gonna literally be our gods i mean and i can't even like begin to explain like this road can lead to to terrible places even stephen fucking stephen hawking has warned us like hey you need to chill the fuck out on ai i know he didn't say that but i'm i'm paraphrasing yeah (laughs) um you need to chill the fuck out on ai because you know it's not outside the realm of possibility that all the fucking science fiction shit about about robots and virtual intelligence and artificial intelligence isn't ultimately going to lead to our destruction. Uh, he's he should be afraid because at least we can run, you know. Yeah, I mean he, he can't run. See, like, because you're creating like I, I suggest anybody listening pick up <coughs> Isaac Asimov's I Robot. Yeah, Isaac Asimov was a science fiction writer, one of my favorites, <clears throat> and he wrote. Basically, essentially, what they're actually using now for AI, and that's to protect us, and that's the three laws. Yeah. The three laws of robotics. And the idea is, I'm not going to get into the laws in specific, because honestly, I can't remember the exact wording, but they revolve around the idea that they can't hurt people. That's the only laws they have in action, Mm -hmm. right? Now, he created these laws, and and even now, people who are creating AI are using these laws and implementing them in creation of said robots. But... We have to remember that Isaac Asimov spent the entirety of iRobot destroying those laws, yeah, and showing us that e- that the simple, even though the laws are simple, the laws are are, are ferment, that it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that robots in their in their infinite intelligence can't find means around said laws. Didn't they just use their intelligence to justify the fact that not hurting humans involves killing humans because humans alive equals human suffering? Exactly. That and like I love there's a certain passage where it involves robots developing a sense of religion around a supercomputer. Yeah. Understanding that that's their god. Give it time. Yeah. I do enjoy the fear that's been coming out of Stephen Hawking. Oh yeah, in the last couple of years, he's talking about aliens. Yeah, between AI and aliens, like he's like, hey, maybe we should broadcast our fucking whereabouts to the rest of the universe. Yeah, maybe that's a bad idea. Yeah, I'm still not sure that he's real as far as all that goes. He's yeah. lived way too long for somebody with his uh, his disease. I'm just saying, he's a robot. Yeah, he doesn't want ro- and, and just to go back to the quick comedic relief of his scenario being, you know, as he is. Yeah, just imagine. His, his ultimate fear is a little bit higher than ours because we think you know, we'll be safe because we can run and drive cars and stuff, but he's going to be reduced to flat planes yeah. of escape. He's going to get stuck next to a stairwell, and there's just robots coming. He's like, stay away from me. <laughs> My legs are useless. <laughs> you know, it's all bad. <laughs> I mean, Bill, like I said, I think we can't even, we can't even think beyond our own animal instincts. Once we start creating these fucking helper robots, you're going to have a large sum of the population being like, can we fuck them? Yeah. And they're going to be fucking the shit out of them. You already know. That's You're, already happening. You know, our fucking uh, parent-to-child ratio is, is at, on, in the national average, is like, what, 1.6 in the United States? Mm-hmm. Uh, other countries, it's even worse. It's like 1.3. <laughs> Once fuckable robots come out, I have a feeling that that might dip below, like, 1.9 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 0.4. Like, yeah. We're going to... We're You're only going to see, like... Children ever great. Children are going to be a rarity in our time, in our in the next generation. When I found out that Google bought the patent to lifelike skin, I already knew what time it was. Oh yeah, they're getting paid. And then celebrities will just you know in, uh, uh, sell their image to companies. Oh yeah, so that people can have celebrity bots. Like why go through the trouble of finding an actual spouse when you can just buy one? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the Henry Ford of robot making to come. See, that hasn't happened yet. Oh, but it will. Robots, like, even the the concept of robot servants are still something that, for a normal person, is outside our, our <laughs> realm of possibility, uh, unless you buy it like a car. Unless you're a creepy bitch that lives in your mom's basement and you don't spend any of your money. You just yeah. save up your money for that fuckbot 2000. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. 
Would I like to have a robot helper clean my house for me and do all that shit? For sure. For sure. But should I? No. No. We got to keep ourselves. If we want our species to continue, we got to we got to do things ourselves. See, I'm cool with like a Roomba. You know, a oh, Roomba is one thing. That's what's a, a Roomba. It, even if it becomes live with intelligence, the worst thing it could do is perhaps run itself into something sticky, run in its run itself into a knife, and yeah. then you know chase me around. Exactly. Then you just have to step on it. Right. It's over with. But if yeah. I get a cleaning robot, I'm going to be awake all the time. I'll yeah. never sleep because I know I'll see it in its eyes. It'll just be in the charging station staring at me waiting for me to sleep. As I say, yeah, the first time I come downstairs to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and it's just sitting in there and it's just sharpening knives. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing, 6284? Oh, I felt it was time to sharpen the knives. I noticed you were cutting your steak yesterday and it was not quite sharp enough. Yes. These, these knives need plenty sharp to cut, cut meat. Who was that creepy fucking robot in... Uh, the gunslinger books oh, andy and yeah okay yeah you come downstairs in the middle of the night and you're fully you know you think he's charging but you're taking a shit in the dark and he's just like you want your horoscope yeah <laughs> no fuck off with that but yeah i horoscope mean horoscope nonsense psychic ass robot fuck that bitch that's some nonsense i can't do it stephen king knows yeah stephen king knows he wrote a few stories about fucking intel artificial intelligence run amok yeah i mean it's our future though it's it i feel like we're just like these dudes are just fucking running full force into the wall, not realizing that this shit's they're they're running right into our fucking our our destruction. Right. Whether it be from robots or fucking you know even virtual intel or uh, uh, VR, you know they're creating our our personal augmented prison for us already. They don't even have to kill us with robots, honestly. If you just made virtual reality a little bit more fluid, yeah, and more accessible and cheaper, yeah, and then you gave us fuck robots. It's all over. It's over. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're done for. Yeah, you're just going to plug in on the couch and go, you know, 16-hour World of warcraft a on. Yeah. And they're going to have to do something where it plugs into your brainstem. That way you're not like a, what was that thing, the Oculus Rift, where you're on that platform <laughs> and you're actually getting a Olympian body from running and ducking and shooting people. They don't want that. They want no. you to veg out on the couch. They don't want none of that. No. Nah. Nothing to do with that. Nope. But yeah, so that's our stance on it. Heavy topic. We hope we... Got into your topic good, St. Catherine, mm. that it's all doom and gloom when it comes to uh, VR, AI, VI, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to give her a marketing suggestion if she wants one. Okay. She should run with that St. Catherine of College Corner and make little lifelike alabaster statues that she could sell. Oh, hell yeah. People put them in their cars. Exactly. Catherine, <laughs> patron saint of travel and puppy dog. Awesomeness. Yeah. Do you, do you feel less awesome? Perhaps you need one of these tiny St. Catherine idols. Pray to St. Catherine, <laughs> College Corner. Yeah. But um, And then the other topic she gave us, this is going to be a short one because I think we're getting ready to run out of time here. Um, <laughs> which uh, crypto would be your ideal valentine? Yeah. So what she's referencing is um, which cryptozoology uh, legend, myth, whatever you want to call it, would be your our ideal valentine? Yeah. And she mentions the cuddliness of Sasquatch. You know what I mean? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, you're basically boiling it down to which crypto animal would be the best lover. Right. Um, I don't know. You know, I bet you, like, Nessie would be... I mean, she's kind of like... She doesn't have any hair. She's not really cuddly. But you just glide all over her body, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's it. But Super ne- smooth. That's if Nessie's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Anymore, you, know, you know she's probably you know if it's a man that thing's probably got like a 12 foot dick Ooh, we, yeah so i don't know how i feel about that google mr hands uh, <laughs> but what about like a like a pegasus can we count that you could i mean they're cryptids right yeah because at least you could fly them what about the thunderbird fuck i feel like that would hurt you just ride it and it would give you tiny tiny minuscule shocks to your nipples just little ones little baby ones yeah, so the thunderbird's more kind of s&m style yeah and i do believe sasquatch would be the cuddliest yeah although his i don't know how i feel about like i mean i would enjoy his strong arms around me for sure but i think a part of me would also be fearful because those arms are so very strong yeah they're so strong you can't escape from them he might love you to death exactly for real i mean like think about king kong just Fucking, he's just sleeping next to you, and then he rolls over, and you're fucking smothered to death. Because over. I bet you he's a deep sleeper too. Yeah, he would just wake up and see your corpse lying there, and, and just go on his way, fucking cross back into his own dimension, never see him again. I like this one. 
uh, Wolpertinger, or the scientific name, I'm going to use uh, Jeff Webbs from Got Blood Outdoors Voice as best I can. Persensis babaricus. <laughs> And it's a it's a jackrabbit with vampire teeth, uh, deer antlers, and apparently the wings of a sparrow. Huh. I don't think it'd get much flight with the wings of a sparrow, but nah. That'd be a little bit of lift, but you know, it's got that rabbit body. I'd say it's more a rabbit, so it's DTF. Down to Fick. Fick. But <laughs> I mean it kinda sounds like a jackalobe minus the wings and the vampire teeth. It's totally better because it's from Germany. Yeah. I mean Oh, that's creepy as fuck. I don't think I'd want to. I don't think I'd want to tangle with the chupacabra or the Jersey Devil for that matter. I can do that with voice right there. It's like a miniature fucking winged, hairy, fat guy with a goatee carrying a leaf of some kind, leading a child into the woods. Oh, you know he's wearing a fedora. His name is Shoju or Jingjing. Translates to heavy drinker or orangutan. So you know he's a party animal. He's a party guy. You want to yeah. hear? His, you want to hear his voice? Okay, let's hear his voice. Clear up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit that out, but uh, you want to fuck? <laughs> I mean, like, I'm angry at everybody because I'm so small. <laughs> People been fucking with me my whole life. <laughs> if he sounds familiar, he should. And what about a nymph? Nympho? Well, that's where nympho comes from. Do tell. Nymphs were like uh, elemental fairies from Greek mm. history. Yeah, they were they were notorious for uh, sexual proclivities. God, they're so small though. Yeah. But they knew how to they knew how to work it. I guess. Have you ever had have you ever had a hand job where it was their full body going like this? Ooh, 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 I like never that. have. I bet you it would be probably pretty good. <laughs> I would I would almost guarantee it. Because I, I mean I don't want to fuck with a pan like a fucking goat person. No. Or a centaur for that matter. Well, uh, look up Mr. Hands. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Hands. I, the the actual uh, cryptid that would I'm sure make all the people that are in Mr. Hands' life wet. With anticipation would be the tick belong. It's a giant fucking muscly horse god. Nice. You know he's killed a man or two. Oh yeah. Just eviscerated him. Not through combat. No. <laughs> no. And like I wouldn't want to fuck with a Wendigo either. No. They eat people. Yeah, that's okay. it's like manis sex, you know? Yeah. Can you imagine a manis? You just wanna fuck? Yeah. Eat your head. <laughs> they haven't evolved enough to know to leave. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm trying to narrow one down. I mean, we, we talked about the lo- the frog man of Loveland. Yeah. I feel like he'd be a quiet lover. Yeah. Like, I'm only worried that... At, <laughs> yeah, at climax, that's exactly what he would do. Frog gasm. And it would just totally turn me off. Frogs do orgasm. It's called a frog gasm. The frog gasm. Out of a term. <laughs> what about the man-eating tree? Mm. So there's so many things in that word that just <laughs> make me... Um, not like that. I mean, the splinters are a bit of a problem, but everything else is just orgasmic. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. We got to ask ourselves, like, this goes back to the fucking Hellraiser notion. Like, a lot of these things, I really feel like their notions of pleasure and pain are much different than ours. Oh, yeah. This guy. So that's the question you got to ask yourself. But I think, I think, St. Catherine, I'm, I'm going to have to go with the cuddliness of the Sasquatch. Yeah. I feel like at the end of the day, you have a higher survivability rate with Sasquatch than any of the others. I'm going to go out on a one here and say the Gnome of Girona. The Gnome of Girona. Because he looks kind of like a miniature kangaroo with a big old mouth. Hmm. He's, he's looking back at his butt. I don't know what that means. but That ass. That ass, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd have to... Either him or the Frogman. I think the Frogman would be a discreet lover. <laughs> That's fucking like terrifying. Yeah. This right here is one of the ones where you would be with your friends and get into that conversation of how much money would it take to... Uh, Bed the Flatwoods Monster, mm-hmm. spade-headed extraterrestrial, possibly misidentified barn owl. Hmm. West Virginia, of all places. Go figure, right? Eat a dick. I was thinking that, and that makes me think of the Mothman. Yeah? The Mothman probably wouldn't be... See, I've never seen the Mothman as a bad thing. He never, like, hurt anybody, as far as we know. He just was a herald of doom. Yeah. So, I mean, he... Don't shoot the messenger. He'd probably be a, 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 a you know, a, the, the dark brooding type. You know what I mean? Like, you just would never get to know the Mothman. He would, he's quiet. You know, you'd ask him how his day was, and he would just, you know, grumble and answer, like, oh, bridge is falling down. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. Lots of people dead. Surrounded by death and destruction. Yeah. So he'd be a bit, he'd be a bit gloomy. I'm surprised he hasn't flown into a campfire yet. I mean, he thinks it's the moon or something. <laughs> Stupid. 
You got to just sit around the fire, and all of a sudden, some giant fucking moth beast just flies right into it. I bet it would smell terrible. Oh, Jesus. Instead of the smell of, like, burning human flesh, it's just a giant amalgamation of moth feathers. Ugh. Aren't you, like, you know that that smell that fucking, like, like, have you ever found, like, computer parts in a fire before? Yeah, You yeah. know what I'm talking about. For sure. That fucking acrid smoke of, like, fucking multiple chemicals and fucking gases being released. And Imagine it smell like that. Imagine his mothballs smacking you in the chin. Yeah. Now... Let me ask you, when you, when, you talk, when we think about cryptozoology, are we talking about, like, a la American God style, too, where we can include, like, people from, di- gods from pantheons in, in this mix? I think that this is our universe and we can do what we want with it. Oh, fuck yeah. So if we're talking about that, what about, like, I wouldn't want Odin. What about the lady that eats you with a vagina? I mean, she'd make for one good time. Another manis theory. Yeah, one good time. Or, like, remember the djinn? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was weird. That's... <laughs> I picture him looking like Dr. Not a Dr. Sean Doherty. Yeah. Oddly enough, he just kind of takes on your your identity after he kills you with his love. Or, like, um, I don't think I'd want to be with Loki either. No, nah, he'd just lie to you. Thor would be cool. <laughs> I bet you he. I bet you he's a he's he's a mighty yet tender lover. Imagine you got in a fight with him though. He'd just put his hammer on your fucking junk. I bet you he'd be more tender than the Valkyries. Yeah. I feel like the Valkyries would just wreck you. Death by snoo snoo. Uh, oh yeah, for real. Yeah. I mean, if we're and if we're talking about the pantheons, like, yeah, it's like a lot of them are, are like the the mantis thing. A good one, good time. Yeah. And then you're probably gonna be dead when it's over with. Like, look at the fucking sirens. <laughs> I don't even think. I think they were just teases. They didn't even like let you get that far. No, they got off to watching you wrecking the rock. Yeah, and then drown. Yeah, they pull you down and probably eat you. Yeah. So you even get. You don't even get far with them. They're just teases. That's yeah, like a teasing man. It teases you and then just eats your head. Yeah. Talk Where's the that. fun in that? No fun. It's cold blooded. Let's go ahead and put the brakes on this. All right. Sadly, we've got. I've got to go. And yeah, next, man. Well. Everybody, we'd like to thank you for listening to the show. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter one than we're used to, but, you know, circumstances this week uh, have dictated a shorter episode. But know that next week there will be a regular episode, and I'm going to I'm gonna cast that topics net this week and see if we can't get some juicy, juicy shit. Um, I'd also like to cast a net about what videos people would like to see. Yeah, definitely. Even if it's just serious shit. So far I've gotten messages about... The slow carb diet and serious topic about uh, serious topic land. Yeah, I need to get off my fat lazy ass and do that. But uh, you know, this week we just lot lots been going on, and actually our studio has been starting to transform into a space that one would call a professional environment, professional creative environment. Yeah, I mean it definitely makes me feel a little bit more uh, energetic. Oh yeah, it doesn't look like a den of a den of horror. It doesn't look like a place you'd get tricked into going and then raped to death. Yeah. It doesn't look like that room that you would put somebody in after you captured them and then put mattresses on the wall. Yeah. It's starting to uh, take the form of a professional podcasting environment that that I say I'm starting to become very proud of. It's not it's a work in progress, but yeah. It's getting where I want it to be. Where we'll get it finally finalized and cleaned entirely and then we'll post sexy pictures of post it. Post some sexy pictures of it. Maybe we can dress up like uh, World War Two ladies and just take pictures. Do a little dance. Create our own little calendar. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, advent calendar. For sure. Eat that chocolate. Men will paint us <laughs> our likeness on planes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so thank you for listening for the show. Um, go to our Facebook page. Like it, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, you got a topic, send it to us. Don't, um, be, don't be afraid. We'd like to thank Ryan Simpson for letting him use his, uh, letting us use his music uh, for our show. And uh, like, thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys next week. We love you. We really do.